Greetings and welcome to another Indigenous Oracle reading. I am Shushana and this is going to be a medicine card reading for Capricorn. Capricorn, have we been feeling angry lately? I usually don't have any incense on for my readings. But for you, Capricorn, I got my frankincense. If you want to smudge your house, if you want to keep the icks away, use frankincense, use myrrh, use cedar, all those things. Work wonders. So let's go ahead and begin. This is going to be a collective reading for Saturn people, for Capricorn people. It's not so much about astrology. It's about gathering a group of people that were born during a certain time and focusing on that collective group. This is not expected to resonate with everybody. I simply read the loudest energy the loudest storyline for what capricorn is going through and i don't usually do all 12 signs at a time if you have noticed i do readings according to how i am called and capricorn has been dealing with so much anger so much anger and anxiety and we're gonna go ahead and get right into this cappies so let's just check the time the dreadful time the dreadful time doesn't time just get in the way time just gets in the way Time, the audacity of time. What, what does time think it is? Just controlling our everyday life in this matrix of ridiculousness. We're going to go ahead and start with our traditional medicine, sweat lodge, Lakota cards. I'm already tapping into Capricorn's energy and I can feel feel the fire i can feel the fury you are enraged because people are just all up in your way every time you try to proceed every time you try to upgrade every time you try to progress there's just all these crowds in your way and all these crowds and all these people they're not going in the direction that you are they're going off the handle, going on other directions, and you're trying to change. You're trying to upgrade. Yes. The first card is going to be, what is the work? What is the work that Capricorn has to do for some peace around here? Capricorn, we have our first card, and this is exactly what Capricorn needs, okay? This is what Capricorn needs. You already know what you need. You want privacy. You want to be left by yourself. You want to get grounded. Visualize a golden root every morning upon sunrise, a golden, shimmering, shiny root. And it goes all the way down and down and down and down and down and down to the ground. Connecting, grounding, protecting. And you're grounded again. You have to do that every single morning because if you don't, you will go off the handle like a frisbee in a very windy day. 
and you will have to wait for the wind and the storm to calm down to get your frisbee back and that is why you're angry you're angry because you're not in control of your emotions you are not balanced i understand that there's people in your way or distractions in your way and you just you feel like you're cornered or you have no elbow space you have no elbow room people are just always in your bubble so the physical work is finding alone time silent time isolation to be grounding yourself and listening to the messages that come in the unlimited stream. There's this unlimited stream of information and truth that we are all capable, fully capable of accessing this information. But we can't hear the stream when the television is on, when people are listening to football in the background and there's all these distractions. So that has to be solved. Capricorns, you need to figure out a schedule, figure out a routine, figure out a place, whether it is a spa, a gym, a certain activity that you need to include into your routine where you are by yourself with no distractions. Because when you are distracted, you snap. You do not want to be distracted right now because you're about to move mountains. You want to, you are ready to to do things. And the opposing force that I always, always speak about is always going to be there. The opposing force is always going to be there to meet us in opposition with just the same amount of strength as we're putting into our ambitions and our goals. The opposition will come just as hard. And we have to defeat that opposition. What is the inner work? The inner work for Capricorns. You are harassed almost on a daily basis. You know, and don't worry because worrying is just going to be a waste of time. Everything in this life is temporary. And everything that you're going through is only going to be there for a phase of time. It's only going to be there for a cycle. And then you're going to go back and look back and look at pictures. And you're going to say, remember, remember that time? Remember that time where I was just getting harassed every single day? Okay, um, no. I know it's not funny, but you know what I mean. One day you're going to laugh about it because it's a stepping stone to where you're going to end up. And you're going to eventually end up in a place or under a certain schedule or routine where you will have that peace of mind. And that mission in itself, that ambition or goal in itself, is a breakthrough because you you have this realization that all you want is a peace of mind you know people want different things at different times in their lives and there is maturity here there is a ripeness of Capricorn realizing that they don't want the superficial things, that they don't want all those material things, that they don't want to get hurt in relationships again. All they want is a peace of mind. It's always Capricorn that makes me cry, I swear, every time. Um, like seriously. <laughs> um, 
in what I find fascinating about all the astrological signs is that there is this karmic connection where you clearly see all of the signs, all of the elements have a specific challenge. Every sign, every element has a different challenge, but we have different signs. We have risings, we have our Mars, and a combination of those challenges. But what I find just a little bit rare, just a little rare, is when people actually make a breakthrough within those challenges. You know, I, I have seen so many people, not to get dark, but like they pass on with those negative characteristics. They never overcome, they never surpass those difficulties upon death. And here with Capricorn, I am seeing a breakthrough for uh, the majority of the group that has had a breakthrough in superficiality and materialistic things. You know, there's all these stereotypes. There's all, it's almost like they do it on purpose to just poke people. And there's this stereotype of Capricorn being nothing but material, nothing but superficial. Sure, in their younger years, or in their sleeping years, but when a Capricorn is mature and awake, they have this epiphany moment where they realize that material and superficiality brings absolutely nothing but emptiness. And all you want is a peace of mind. And that in itself is a blessing because you're wanting something, you're desiring something that's good for you, as opposed to all those things that you desired in the past that were not good for you because you were just not... <sighs> I don't like using the word alignment with it. I really don't. That word kind of bothers me. But let's just say you settled for less. Capricorn. Oh, which reminds me, which reminds me about the two groups that I wanted to talk about, but I'm only going to talk about it if it's brought up energetically because I am connecting with all of the higher selves of the Capricorn Collective as well as nature in its organic form, and I don't want to just blurt out a message that I got if it's not mentioned energetically within this collective, so... I'm not going to say anything about the two groups. I'm just going to keep going and see what happens. Um, the inner work is for you to connect with Source. How many Capricorns in here have become disconnected from Source? Why is there disconnection? Because you don't have privacy, because you've been angry, you haven't had time, and that's why you're grumpy. You're grumpy because... You don't have enough alone time with Source to get grounded and to listen to all of the beautiful messages that Source wants to give you. I'm not going to talk too much about that one because that one is private and is going to vary between you and Source. The spiritual advice for Capricorns during this time... It's time to move on. It's time to move it. It's time to move on. I feel like this has to do with another industry. I feel like there is an industry that is financially blocking you. You're working for a certain industry that doesn't give you a, doesn't give you a slither of what you deserve. You bust your behind for this industry and they just give you this little minimum wage, you know, and at the end of the day, you're tired and you don't have the energy to work on yourself and your sanity and your entrepreneurship 
and your ambition and that breaks you. That breaks you. It shatters you to pieces. And this has been going on for several months now and you have to be careful. You have to be careful. So what I want you to do, if possible, is I want you to ask for one less shift. I know that's going to feel really wobbly, but I feel like you need to ask for one less shift. Just don't even ask. Tell them, you know what? I'm not available on Mondays. I'm not available on Mondays. <laughs> Tell that to whatever industry you're working for that is not giving you what you deserve. And use that extra day to take care of yourself because I feel like you're not putting yourself first. I feel like you're putting these low vibrational low life people before everything and they're not even giving you what you deserve so in order to help your transition wouldn't that be easier to do a less shift and work a little less for that industry and work a little more for yourself because you are valuable and you have things to do. You There's people, places, pe places you gotta be, per people you gotta meet, you know what I mean? <laughs> so this is really about prioritizing yourself. You know, you have this bad habit. You have this bad habit of doing too much for people. And let's not even get into the emotional part of it. I just got to do a quick time check. Sorry. Sorry. Wow. Okay. Shall we talk about the emotional stuff? Oh my God. I can feel it in the pit of my stomach. You really want to talk about the emotional stuff. So the message that I got for Capricorn, I'm like trembling right now to tell you. The message that I got for Capricorn were that there are two groups here. Okay. There's going to be two groups here. There's a group that's suffering and there's a group that is embracing their singlehood or a new person. Okay. The people that are embracing their singlehood or a new relationship or the potential of a new relationship are the ones that are doing better than the group that is suffering. The group that is suffering is suffering because they're codependent and hanging on to a past person that let them down again and again and again and again, okay? How do you know if you are with the right person? How do you know if you are with the wrong person? I'm sorry I have to tell you this. If you are suffering, you are with the wrong person. If you're constantly sitting there watching tarot readings, you are with the wrong person. If you are embracing and happy being single and embracing or happy with the idea of a new person or a potential person, you're not going to be suffering. You're suffering because you are still holding on to the wrong individual. Yes, that individual has feelings for you. They have a lot of feelings for you, but that doesn't mean that they deserve you. You have wasted so much time, so many years getting disappointed by this individual there's this individual that has been in and out of your life for the past five years and they lead you on they disappoint you they lead you on they disappoint you and there's this intense connection between you but just because that's there doesn't mean that they deserve you you have to think of the long term. You have to think of how this relationship is going to be 
in the future? Is it going to grow or is it just going to fall apart or is this person just going to be a burden on your back? You know what I mean? There has to be a team in a relationship dynamic. There has to be communication, honesty, friendship, openness, a, where both of you are team players and both of you providing emotional support. And you cannot sit there and tell me that the person that you've been on and off with for the past five years has given you that. There, I said it. So those are the two groups. And for the majority of you that were involved with someone on and off for five years, that, that person was a Taurus or a Scorpio is just what I get. I don't usually announce that, but just to give you more validation, if you don't believe me, recognizing your spiritual authority. Like this is such a beautiful card to get after we talked about all this. You know, you have to recognize your spiritual authority. You have to recognize your spiritual power, your temple, your church. Where's the church? Where's the temple? It's in you. And you got yourself attached or got yourself feeling towards something when it didn't show you that it deserved you you know and that's like the thing about capricorns is they do too much for people in the workplace in relationships and you have to learn to meet them as much as they meet you energetically you know if if I don't want to go too into that because that is intense, 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 intense. But for those of you who are embracing your singlehood or embracing the thought of being with a new person or you found a person that you want to be in a relationship with in the future, bravo, bravo, bravo to you. I am so serious. It has been such an uphill battle and it seems like it still is. It feels like it still is an uphill battle. Okay, we have two beautiful messages. We have resist dependency. You see this? Resisting dependency. So this is what I get, again, with the two groups. I get that the person that you were on and off with, again, this is not going to resonate with everybody, so don't get all personal if it doesn't resonate with you. I'm just reading the loudest storyline here. Don't come for me. So the two groups that I'm getting is the person that you were on and off with for five years. That, unfortunately, again, represented codependency. And the new person represents an independent relationship, an independent dynamic where both of you are coming together as individuals in a relationship and you've never had that before. And that is the healthy route. That's the healthy way that you want to go. Take nothing for granted. Stand firm and do not give in to the urge of attachment. Everything falls apart if you waver. With addiction, obsession, and dependence comes loss of freedom. Do not forfeit your liberty. This is also having to do with those of you who are addicted to non-holistic drugs. For those of you who are addicted to alcohol, when you binge with alcohol, when you binge with non-holistic drugs, you are forfeiting your liberty.
you are going to have to find a solution to your episodes that lead you to a very dark place. You see the snake, the snake here in the background having to do with addiction and darkness and obsession and those things that lead you to a very dark place lure you, lure you through stress. These These dark entities attack your amygdala and your traumas and your triggers and they lure you and they tell you things. They tell you that they will alleviate all of your pain with these drugs and alcohol, take all that pain away and then they hijack your amygdala. You have two to six seconds to prevent that from happening. You're going to have to find a solution to those episodes. You're going to have to write down a sentence to yourself that will trigger a relapse prevention. So for starters, this is not going to happen overnight. This is going to take a couple times. Write a short letter to yourself. Gmail a letter to yourself that is going to basically say, I love you so much and please do not go back to doing such and such because last time that you did that this and this and this happened sometimes that is all that you need all you need is a reminder when you feel like an episode is happening you are getting attacked you are getting triggered you are getting lured you read that gmail that you wrote yourself last time this happened this this and this and this happened and if that doesn't work then you write a different letter if that doesn't work, you write a different sentence. You find the sentence that prevents the amygdala hijack so that it doesn't keep happening because everything is falling apart every time that you are not successful at preventing these episodes. Very, 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 very painful episodes. Look at this beautiful message. This is such a beautiful message. This right here says, think twice. And this is exactly what we're talking about. Think twice. How do hijacks happen? Hijacks happen because your amygdala is higher. You do not want your amygdala to be higher. You want your PFC to be higher. You want your prefrontal cortex to be higher. You want your task positive network to be activated. You need to increase the frequency of your PFC so your amygdala never wins the battle. You need to put yourself first because you are under a lot of stress and you, if you are one of those people that has to take care of other people, then it's even more important to put yourself first and make sure that you are not doing more than you can carry that you're not i feel like you volunteer like here i go again you always make me cry i feel like you're always volunteering to take on all this load for people and 
doing their jobs. You volunteer to do their jobs and they take advantage of you and take you for granted, especially at work and at your home. I feel like there's people that just walk all over you and you do so much for them and they don't appreciate it. And that is another thing. Then you need to jot down your triggers. What triggers you? What are the triggers? And how can you shut all those doors so that they are not able to hijack your amygdala? Think twice, no matter your level of power or success. Set aside your pride and prepare for the unexpected. Don't underestimate the situation. The outcome may be altered if you examine the viewpoints and approaches of others before taking action. Okay? So, I'm glad I was able to get this reading out for you because it's spring break next week and I'm not going to have any privacy. Speaking of... <laughs> I'm not going to have any privacy myself. So I wanted to put this reading out there for Cappies before spring break because I don't think that I am going to be present for a bit until I get my own privacy back. We have a beautiful journey for our Capricorns on a positive note. My God. Another thing that I wanted to tell you was use really negative or heavy lessons. Recycle them. Recycle the negative lessons. Recycle the heaviness of those lessons to uplift yourself and convert it into power that will ultimately uplift you, uplift yourself with your own traumas. You've had all those traumas. You've, ha you've overcome and had all these breakthroughs. You are stronger now. Your shield is stronger now. You can take harder hits now. Right, let's do a dream oracle card for our copies. All right, I'm going to have to pause this because I got to grab my phone. Okay, where were we? Okay. So, we have examine your beliefs about being tested. So, this is the card that is usually associated with questioning Western medicine procedures. So, if someone is telling you that you need a Western medicine procedure of any kind, such as an injection of any sort, this is like my no card. Like, no, no, no. You need to research TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, holistic medicine, alternative medicine, natural herbs, so forth. Absolutely not. Um, for some of you, it has to do with surgery and that 
would have to be the same thing. You cannot go by what Google says, you know. You can't just trust everything that you see on Google. And then we have being present. So a lot of you are worried about the future. No, what's that word? What's that word? If you're worried, you're thinking about the past. If you're anxious, you're thinking about the future. And if you're calm, you're thinking about the present. The present moment. Like, just think about it. This moment right here is never going to happen again. Like, do you ever think that? Like, see what I'm saying? I swear, you're going to get me to cry a third freaking time. Like, do you ever think about that? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> like, this moment right here, this moment right here is never going to happen again. Like, this moment right here, this beautiful second... The birds are singing. The sun is shining. We don't even know if it's real. You know, there's so many fake things out there. Um, the planets are not even really planets. They're actually stations. They're stations. And this moment is just fleeing, fleeting, fleeing, fleeting like a hummingbird in my Native American culture, the hummingbird is the highest frequency bird. It's not the eagle. It's the hummingbird because of how it just disappears, you know? And that is what the present moment is. The present moment is represented by a hummingbird. It's here and then it's gone. So why are we going to sit here and worry about the past and be anxious about the future when that's just all part of the agenda, you know? This system wants people to be worried because they know that when you are worried, it lowers your frequencies. And that's what they want. They, they want everybody functioning at a low frequency. We have making a difference. And this is the miracle card. So this is about expecting a miracle, you know? And a lot of times when people see this in anywhere, you know, when, when they hear the mention of miracles, they think that they don't have to do anything, but you do, you do. You have to have a little faith. It takes ingredients to get a miracle going. You have to have a little faith and you have to put forth your own effort as humbly as possible. Okay. I think that's all the messages that I have for you. Oh, let's do a crystal card. I can't leave you without doing a crystal card. We have retilated quartz. This is about clearing all of the negativity in your life one by one, going through your house and going through every single corner, every single shelf, every single drawer, every single piece of clothing, every article of paper. and getting rid of all the rubbish that you don't need and preparing to elevate the vibration of your lifestyle as a whole. This will include getting rid of certain friends, cutting off certain friendships, unfollowing certain people, unsubscribing from certain people, uh, removing dirt, certain downloads, removing certain songs that no longer serve your new identity. You're going to be looking very attractive to people because you are progressing. 
with your whole heart, mind, body, and soul. So let's look at the book real fast. Why not? Capricorn is always feeling rushed and you're tired of that. You're tired of that. You want to be in a position when you are no longer rushed, where you don't got to look at the time because you're working for yourself, working your own hours, working your own schedule, changing your own schedule. It's no secret that, astrologically speaking, Capricorn's destiny is behind a boss chair. <laughs> you know, there's like certain signs that just belong in the boss chair because they're so good at what they do, you know, and that's Aries, Capricorn, Leo. Those, I think, are like the three that I feel should not have anybody telling them what to do. What else? We have vibrational healing, higher mind, reconciliation. You are subconsciously receiving loving vibrations and loving thoughts from someone connected to your past. Oh, here we go again. Really? Come on now. Don't get any thoughts. <laughs> Don't get any bad ideas. <laughs> Don't get any bad ideas, okay? Just because you got this card does not mean to go back to a toxic person, police. You are receiving loving vibrations and loving thoughts from someone connected to your past. An episode or conflict that hurt you emotionally is now being healed and reconciled by the power of forgiveness and unconditional love. Over the coming days, you may find yourself emotionally and mentally reciprocating this love as you reflect on a person or past event. Through this mutual exchange of love, past wounds are now energetically being healed and all negative attachments resolved and released. So that's so beautiful. So even for those of you who have successfully let go of a toxic connection from the past, this is putting peace and closure to it. So this is putting peace and closure to a lesson that is only going to uplift you and is ultimately going to allow you to have an amazing relationship with someone who deserves you. Last but not least, let's do a color card for our copies. I still got my cards though. Okay, I am not picking those up right now. The cards that we got, wow, that's never happened before. You know, I'm kind of superstitious. Mm, and I like it, I like it a lot. Do you know what that means to me? What that signifies to me is that you're finally gonna put yourself first. Finally, it's gonna be about you and Source taking over the world and Source guiding you to what, where, who you need to be at with who, you know what I mean? You're finally going to surrender your life to a higher purpose and you've never done that before because you spent so many years trying to figure everything out and you finally have so the significance to me of cards falling like that on the floor is like you're finally going to successfully overcome not only the opposing force but all of those people places and things that held you back and it goes back to the beginning when we were talking about you're getting ready to move mountains okay so we have two cards for you for what colors you need to work on 
and they're so beautiful I don't even know which one to, to, to talk about first so we have this beautiful burgundy that is talking about awakening your passion it's so crazy because you wanted to be in a relationship for so bad for so long and all you found were was toxicity you know and now that you are okay with not having anything you have an opportunity that is not toxic it's almost like as soon as you stop looking you you found something that is not toxic and you can finally awaken your passion towards something that is not toxic for once in your life. Of course, this is talking about a person or a potential person. And then we have lavender connecting your body, mind, and soul. And this is going back to being gentle with yourself, being compassionate with yourself, grounding connecting grounding protecting every morning at sunrise coming up with that golden root shiny golden root that goes down into the soil and calming your emotions okay your anger has a story and it's so important for you to allow that story to be told in order to release it a lot of times people ostracize anger and they say oh anger is bad it's not good to be angry no anger is trying to express a story and it's being suppressed from being told so it's important for that story to be told whether you can talk to somebody about that anger and if that if you cannot do that writing it down on a piece of paper because the anger is valid and is actually productive in my opinion there are certain things in this world that are counterproductive right such as binging on toxic substance that's counterproductive but anger anger in my opinion is not counterproductive because it lights a match to change thank you so much for watching till next time